Special Operations, Covert Ops, Espionage, The Team House, with your hosts, Jack Murphy and David Park. We disclosed all that to the Department of State, Department of Defense. We actually went over and talked to John Carlin at the DOJ and advised him on all this. And um, we had a board meeting in March of 2016 where I laid all this out for the board. And I said, you know, I was getting ready to say, look, either Eric goes or I go. Right. This front just was the CEO for slightly under three years. And. Before I could do that, first Eric gets up and he basically for two hours just tells the board what an awful human being I am, <laughs> that I'm just jealous and I'm trying to steal the company from him. I said, that very well may be, Eric, but either you go or I go. I really don't care. Right. So we're about ready to have a vote on that matter. And I think I got two votes for Eric leaving, me and Admiral Feldman. Right. The other board members are Chinese Communist Party members. Hong Kong businessman, the former Nigerian um, Civil Aviation uh, Commission uh, chairman. And I think Eric's already negotiated with them and, you know, has kind of their votes. But before we can have the vote, the two Chinese Communist Party members that are on our board, they say, can we say something first? I'm like, yeah, yeah. One of them's a vice chairman. I say, say whatever you want. You know, I've been, been in this conference room for two days. I'm frustrated. I'm tired. Uh, so they stand up next to Eric and they say, Greg, we heard everything you have to say. We appreciate all your efforts with the company. However, going forward, Frontier Services Group, it is Eric Prince. So, okay. So clearly I'm out at that point. It is CIDIC, which is the Chinese sovereign fund. Mm -hmm. It is going to work with Belt and Road. And it's going to provide security for Belt and Road. We weren't a security company at that point. So, I mean, it was literally one of those moments that take your breath away. Uh, I, did, I just remember looking at Admiral Fallon, and then I looked at these two, you know, Chinese Communist Party members, and I said, well, obviously I resigned. And Admiral Fallon looks at me, and he says, well, I'm resigning with Greg. Um, so we, we announced our resignations that day, took between a week and a month to take care of the paperwork. Pete Phillips left the company. Chuck Thompson left the company. Adam Sierlowski left the company. So all the Americans basically left the company, except for three people. The only Fr Americans that stayed with the company. Go ahead, Jack. I just had something to interject there that I, I, well, first off, I wanted to point out for people who are listening, maybe don't understand, like, China has ostensibly a type of capitalism. They have private companies, but any of the bigger companies have Chinese Communist Party members embedded in them, just as Greg is describing here, um, that have an oversight and, and represent the party's wishes in the company. I mean, ultimately, that company is going to be subordinate to the People's Republic of China. And that what that brings me to is my question, Greg. I want to ask you about Eric. Um, this is a guy who, as you said, he hates Democrats. How does he feel about working with the Chinese Communist Party? I have a hard time squaring that circle. Well, I, I do too, and it's this. So obviously, when I was the CEO, we were working with the Chinese Communist Party too. However, we were providing third-party independent logistics around Africa. Mm -hmm. I had, we'd never, we'd done one job for the Chinese since I'd been there, and that was repatriating some bodies from um, – there was a terrorist attack in Bamako and four Chinese nationals got killed and we transported their bodies back for them. It was the only job we ever did for the Chinese. So we took their money, they sat on our board, but we didn't do anything for them. So, you know, obviously I said earlier, I'm the sucker in the room. Um, so we knew we were working with the Chinese Communist Party, but, but this is a game changer because we went from third party logistics. Right. To now we're going to provide yeah, security yeah. services in China. Right? For Belt and Road. Right. I'm right. like, holy shit. So, right. like I said, all the Americans walked away. So we, we had Admiral Fallon, obviously a four-star former CENTCOM, Pete Phillips, former deputy JSOC, John Dolan, former senior guy, SIGINT. Uh, we had three or four other military guys. We had some former CIA guys. We just all got up and walked away. Okay? 
and, and people stayed. Go ahead. I, I was just gonna say, and Belton Road is arguably like uh, uh, the overall umbrella for part of the paramilitary operations going on I against the Uyghurs, right? Or, or at least su su supporting that in certain ways. Well, well I mean, Belton Road is more overarching than that. It is the Chinese strategy to project across the globe. So it's even it's more than that, David. Okay. So yeah, it's a know, way to I go mean, around American naval supremacy at the, at the end of the day. He, yeah. No. Absolutely. So so you know certainly they're in Xinjiang where the Uyghurs are. Right. However, that is to project Chinese power. I mean it's it's it, it's 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 crazy. Yeah. Um, that an American would stay involved. So Eric stayed, obviously as chairman. Um. A guy named Dave Whittingham stayed. He was Eric's primary interpreter, but he became much more involved later on. And then, you know, much to my chagrin, a guy named Rick Peregrino stayed. And Rick was in charge of training. Um, Rick's a former recon marine. Um, and, you know, he stayed on as their chief security officer. Um, and I think he may even still be there. So basically, from March of 2016 till today. So when I left... We did not have any security services of Frontier Services Group. Zero. Today, that company has 35,000 security guards deployed across the world, including, which really breaks my heart, in Hong Kong, mm -hmm. uh, where, you know, that population is completely repressed now. Mm -hmm. So Frontier Services Group, where Eric was the chairman, set up that Blackwater 2 that I talked about earlier that I said we can't do. And there's some, been some articles written about it, and I don't know exactly what is going on and who's armed and who's not. And I don't want to try to split the hairs between police services and defense services. So I don't know if it's legal or not legal for Eric to be doing that. That's for someone else to decide. What I do know is that no American should have been doing that. That's what I do know. You you said earlier, Greg, that you felt from your point of view that some of the guys who were forced out of the company, uh, out of the UAE, and then when you were forced out, that Prince was trying to use you guys as a cover for other things he was trying to do behind the scenes. Well, it, absolutely. So, you know, if you really think of it, you know, so I, I'm with um, Eric. Right before this. Thank you.